you doing? I'm doing good, doing good, doing good. So, gotta love North Carolina winters. We don't get snow, but we get the colder temperatures. I think tonight's temps are supposed to get down around about 25, 26 degrees in the location I'm camping at. Last I checked, I mean, that could change a little bit, but we'll just have to wait and see. So what I'm attempting to do is get into Fisher Creek Reservoir. There's an island on that reservoir that I'm attempting to get to the camp on. Um, attempting, I'm saying that because it's, it's a windy day. I'm going down river, so I got the current help me, but unfortunately, the winds are blowing up river, so I'm fighting a bad headwinds. I'm getting gusts up to 35 miles an hour, so I'm having a real hard time getting there on the, in this canoe. The bright thing is, is tomorrow the winds are supposed to be blowing in the same direction, so when I leave here, I'll have tail winds, which will help push me up river back to the takeout location. I'm TP hot tent camping tonight is the uh, game plan. I haven't used my TP hot tent in probably about a year something around that time frame so i want to get it out and uh camping it this weekend i got some new uh sleeping gear as far as what to sleep on top of pads and stuff like that um this lighter weight versus my uh small compact camping cot or my full-size cots so i'm gonna give that a shot tonight too um i brought wood with me i got a canoe full of wood instead of collecting out here in the field chopping it splitting and all that and get it ready for the hot stove I just brought it with me because all week it, we've had storm after storm after storm. So everything is saturated out here. The river's probably, it looks like, I could be off a foot or two, but it looks like the river's up about five, six, maybe even seven foot. I mean, the river's high. When my wife dropped me off, the, you don't even see the boat ramp no more. It's underwater and half the parking lot's underwater. So the river is high which is kind of cool because an island I normally camp on that I've already rode past, it's underwater, all I see is trees. So even if I wanted to camp on the island that I normally camp on, it's not an option for me. The island I'm going to out on Fisher's Creek though, shouldn't be a problem because it, it's got a quite a bit of elevation gain above water, so it shouldn't be flooded. I'm just hoping for flat ground. I've never been, actually where I'm sitting in the river right now is a new place of the river behind the camera so far as I've ever been on this river coming down as far as uh, camping and all that. So I'm in new territory now. So I don't even know, uh, I've seen the island on Google Earth and all that good stuff, but I haven't seen it in person. I'm hoping I didn't make a mistake by not choosing to hammock camp out here, that I'm gonna have flat ground. I'm hoping, well, I guess we'll wait and see. So we're gonna uh, start battling up upwind here and try to get to this island. We're about to leave the river part and go into the reservoir, which is a bigger body of water, so the winds are gonna to be tough. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna tune you guys in even more during the row, or if I'm just gonna wait till I get the island and then show you once we get there so I can concentrate on paddling because the winds are so strong. It keeps wanting to turn my canoe backwards. And I'm fighting it, folks. I've been on this river for a good 30 minutes now and making very slow progress due to the high winds, so. I'll holler at y'all a little bit. Let's, let's do the damn thing, right? All right, folks. Uh, somebody asked me in my last premiere, what this was what it, i think it was bj bj this is a w for whiskey so all my videos in the past and all up to now when you guys see me throw this i'm not throwing gang signs nothing like that it's the w for whiskey for whiskey's adventure so holla at your boy we'll tune in with y'all when we cross the channel there you go bj hopefully that's the question you were asking and i got you your answer brother holla at your boy peace All right, I'm on the island, but I made a rookie mistake on this one. Almost cost me this whole trip and all my gear. So I'll show you, I'm gonna sit up up there. So there's no real good, easy way to exit the water on this island. It's all like a steep bank. So I come into the shallowest part here. I unloaded some of the gear that was up front where I was sitting, 
but all the gear that was there, including my hot stove, which is on top of the front of the canoe, I didn't unload it. So I got out, ran my rope up around the tree and started like a pulley system so I can pull my canoe just up, up on the hill. Not even considering because of the ink of the bank, when I did it, the back end of my canoe back there would sink underwater and those two, where the hand grip is there, those two holes, water started gushing in. And before I knew it, the faster I could react, the half of my canoe just filled up with water. Hot stove went underwater completely. My, uh, my uh, food and clothes bags started floating off. I spent the last hour, had to take my pants off, run down into the lake to grab my gear before it floated off, pull it up. Had to em empty the whole canoe, pull the canoe up the rest of the way. Took my hot stove up there, took all the parts out, dumped it upside down, it completely full of water. Hot stove was completely full of water. Huge rookie mistake. I should have never have done that. I know better than that, but I did it anyways. So I got to catch my breath because I've been bailing water, but I'm going to set up my hot tent right there is where we're going to set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry the rest of my gear from right there up here, pull my canoe just a little bit more up and then flip it upside down and then we'll get camp set up. But I need to take a break for a minute. So I'll be back with you once I take a break. What's up everybody so i got the hot stove started a little bit early about a half hour earlier than i wanted it's about 4 30. it took me a while to get out here and get set up i think i got started on the river right around uh, noon i think I, I i can't remember but i think it was around around noonish and it took three hours almost to get to this island and that was just because of the major headwinds i was dealing with to get here um then I got wet, which you guys, I told you guys about. Huge rookie mistake. Made another rookie mistake, and I put my hot stove together without putting my gloves on and cut my finger. And then the third rookie mistake I made is I didn't bring my first aid kit out here. So I had to wrap my finger up in toilet paper and just hold it until, the, until it stopped bleeding or whatever. Now my finger's sore. And the other bad thing about not having the first aid kit, I don't have my alcohol pads or peroxide. I don't have anything to clean the wound. And my hands are dirty from everything getting dirty from getting wet and then throwing up on the bank, right? So um, I just hope it doesn't get infected. It's late enough in the day now. I don't want to turn around and break down and leave just so I can clean it. Hopefully I don't regret that decision because time I got about halfway back, it'd be dark and I'd be doing this in the dark and it's supposed to be windy all through the night. It's just, it's just not safe to go back on the water. So I'm just going to rough it out. Hopefully I don't get infected. Hopefully it doesn't. I mean, to, truth be told, I cut myself all the time out the, out in the woods, and I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily the type to break out the first kit and start bandaging myself up, so I'm praying my immune system's good. The only difference now is normally I cut myself either my knife or you know, branches or something to that effect, effect, not a dirty hot stove. So 
I'm just praying I don't get an infection before I can get home tomorrow and get it all cleaned up. Again, I got the hot stove going because I'm trying to dry out stuff that got wet. Luckily, my waterproof bags held when I took everything out to set up. Everything was dry. Now, if everything was wet inside my waterproof bags, like my sleep bag and all my gear was wet on the inside of those bags, I would just, I probably wouldn't, I'd be rowing my way out and calling it quits. Because I wouldn't try to sleep out here without a sleeping bag that's dry and everything else. So, even though I got the hot stove, because I'm not the type that likes to stay up all night to keep the hot stove going. I keep the stove going until I'm tired and ready to go to bed. Then I'll stock it out one good time and I'll pass out. And then when it goes out, it goes out. I'll just restart in the morning. Dinner tonight is going to be Denny Moore Beef Stew. So that's what we're about to do. I'm sitting here relaxing and kind of warming up. Because I did have to strip down and get an out water to fetch my gear. I am I'm dry because I took all my clothes off to do it, right? And then put my clothes back on when, as soon as I get out of the water to kind of dry off. But I am kind of chilled to the bone. So I'm going to sit here and enjoy the heat of this hot stove for a little bit. And then probably get dinner going before it gets dark. I really didn't think it was going to take me almost three hours, three and a half, maybe even closer to four hours to get here. But those winds, we were getting probably gusts to 20, 25 mile an hour. And it was just, it was beating me up. It took forever. I kept having to pull over and take a break and get out of the wind. Luckily, tomorrow, the wind direction is not going to change, so the wind's going to be to my back, and I'm going to have tailwinds, which will help me go up river to get back out to the takeout location, so hopefully tomorrow it's not as long and as hard, because tomorrow's daytime temperatures are not supposed to be as warm as it was today, and I think today we only got around about 45 degrees. I think tonight, last I check, I think we're going to get around 27, 28 degrees out, so it's going to actually get Fahrenheit, so it's going to dip below freezing temperatures um so you know another good night to hot tent i'm glad i found flat land so i didn't have to worry about did i make a mistake by not bringing my hammock just in case i needed it i found good flat land here so i'm good here but again i'm going to stop talking i'm going to sit here and warm up hit my vape probably should be drinking coffee not cold mountain dew but you all know how i am with my mountain dew so i'm going to drink my mountain dew and then uh, enjoy a couple hits off my vape. And then uh, probably get dinner going here in a couple minutes. So we'll tune you all back at dinner time. Holler at your boy. All right. Nice little setup, right? So, smoke coming down the chimney. So before I get snuggled in, we lose daylight. I figured come out and kind of look around the island for a minute. Move around a little bit before I have, I'm mean, in the tent for the night. I mean, hot tent camp is nice because you get the warmth of the tent. You gotta kind of be careful and watch yourself when you hot tent camp. You don't spend your entire camping time inside your tent where it's warm. Because otherwise, what's the point of getting out in nature, right? If you're just gonna sit inside of a tent, you might as well just stay home. So, we're gonna just come out and explore the island a little bit. Behind me, there's where all the houses are on the other shoreline. And I'm not gonna go that far because I don't want them to see me in here. I don't want no surprise visitors or anything like that, but it's a pretty big island. It's got big trees on it. It's got a lot of little trees. There's definitely plenty of firewood out here too that I'm seeing. I see dead standing and everything. So if I didn't bring wood, I probably would have been good, but as long as it took me to get out here, I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I did bring wood because I'd be busy right now cutting sawing, which would help keep me warm, I guess. But the length of time it took me to get out to this campsite was ridiculous. Cinder blocks up here. Maybe at one time they had a fire ring. I bet you the people that live on the other side of the banks come over here and camp on this island, which I would too if I was them. good it's plenty of flat up here too so tents would definitely work here 
not just tents. Let's go all the way across real quick. But uh, hammocks would work here. This is great for everything. Definitely dead standing all over this island. So firewood won't be a problem. So I know that when I come out here, I can spring because I got. I'll probably bring Al Hunter out here at some point. I'm starting to say that a lot. I'm getting finding a lot of spots that I think she would enjoy camping, but I don't. She doesn't go out as much as she used to with me. She still goes, but just not as much. She's you know 16, getting ready to be 17 years old, so she's got a life of her own outside of camping with dad all the time. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy it when she comes, but can't blame her, right? She is a kid, she wants her freedom, she wants to be able to go and have fun with her friends and her boyfriend and everything else, so you gotta let her have her freedom. I don't wanna be a tight-nosed dad because all that does is draw, make your kids go out and do stuff behind your back. I give Al Hunter and my, not just her, all my kids, a lot of leeway, a lot of trust, but they earned it, you know. At some point, you got to step back and hope you raise them right and let them make some decisions so they, uh, if they make the wrong decisions, they can learn what happens with the consequences. You know, all I can do is just try to guide her to hope she doesn't make a mistake that is, would cost her big time, you know what I mean? But... This is a beautiful island. I love this. Shooting across to the other side of the island. Now this backside, from what I see on Google Earth, if I'd have came in this way, I probably wouldn't have <laughs> drowned my boat, my gear, because there should be a like almost like a beach landing on this side, but there's also a bunch of houses on this side, so I didn't want to enter this side because I didn't want to see the, the, the people that live at the houses to see me. It's all about uh, so I can be left alone. I don't have no visitors show up on me. As far as I can tell, nobody owns this island. Maybe the power company or something like that, but I'm not sure. I couldn't find any anybody that owned it when I was trying to look and do my homework on it. But the same note, I also do not see any trespass, no trespassing signs anywhere. So if somebody shows up and tells me to get off here, this is their property, then I'll pack up and get out of here. But otherwise, I'm going to enjoy it because I don't see no trespassing signs. Oh, that's a big house over there, folks. Let's take you over there and let you see that before I work my way back towards camp to get dinner started. Should be a beach landing on the side of the island somewhere. I'm just well, there's definitely would have been easier. Look at that house over there, people. That thing is huge. Rich people. All right. Well, we're gonna work our way back towards camp. Depending on how windy it is tomorrow, I might just roll around this island, do a loop around it so I can kind of check everything out on it. I'm definitely not going to be able to explore this whole island on this trip. This I should have came out here for two nights. I mean, technically I'm off work Monday, so I could technically stay out here two nights. And I always bring extra food and extra gear with me, so I have what I need to be able to stay out here for two nights. I'm going the wrong way. Problem with that is, is because uh, I'm off of work Monday, but Mama Bear's got to work Monday, and uh, it could be right around dark or just after dark before she gets off work to be able to come all the way to the drop-off location to pick me up if I stayed out until Monday, and I'd rather not do that. So I'm just going to stay out for one night and then go home sometime tomorrow, and then I'll just edit this video Monday. Because I'll be off of work. My, uh, the wife's at work. I'll be editing. <laughs> well, I'm working my way back to camp, folks. So I can uh, get dinner started. Because I am getting hungry. I burned a lot of energy to get to this island. So 
I am quite hungry. I just got to find where camp is. Really, I just got to get to the lake over here and then go that way. And at some point, I will run back into my camp. What I'll do is I'll drop in a photo real quick from Google uh, Map or Google Earth or something like that to show you exactly where I'm at. And then once you see that, we'll come back and I'll be uh, cooking dinner at that point. How's your boy? Check out the photo where I'm at. Did any more beef stew, folks, for dinner? It's all ready. Need to let it cool down for a minute. This is one of my new pots that my father-in-law got me. It came with this, a little tiny or a skillet that goes underneath of it, and then a regular like coffee pot. And then I got a titanium cup set and a little coffee brewing set that my mother-in-law got me, which you guys seen on my last episode, because I believe I cooked oodles and noodles in it and my coffee. So. Oh, I can't wait to eat. I am hungry. This has been one heck of a trip. First, I flood my boat, get all my gear wet. Then I cut myself on my hot stove. And then realized I didn't bring my first aid kit, so I can't properly mend myself up. The trip to get to this island took... So I did call the wife, just to clarify. So she says I got out of the truck and got on the river around 1130-ish. And I didn't get here... And dumped the boat until around 3.30ish, almost 4 o'clock. And then time I got up on top here and got the boat all dug out, it was closer to 4 o'clock. So it took me almost four, yeah, four hours, just over four hours to row that distance. Now the distance from here to where my put-in location, it's maybe, I'm just guessing, two, maybe three miles. And I could do that easily. But the headwinds I was dealing with coming here, you know, gust up to, I'm assuming, 30 miles an hour because that's what the forecast was, you know, forecasting it for. It was rough. I mean, I guess the good thing about that is because the winds ain't, we're supposed to have winds tomorrow too, is the wind direction is, is going to be the same tomorrow as today. So at least the winds will be to my back tomorrow getting out of here, which will help me get out uh, off this island and get me back to the takeout location so I don't have to fight the current too bad. The winds will help me. But I really had to fight to get here. I was not thinking it was going to take me that long so I'd have more time to explore the island more than I already did. Um, but it didn't seem to happen. It seems like here lately I get to where I'm going to camp at right before dark and I just got to rush gear things up and get dinner going, you know. I, got, I guess I should have got out the door earlier is what I should have done. But I honestly didn't think it was going to take that long to get here. I didn't. <laughs> Those headwinds were a pain. I had to stop on the... Uh, Keep going over to the side, to the shore to get out of the winds and take breaks because it was wearing me out. And now I'm completely drained and starving. Mm. Oh, do any more taste. I love doing more beef stew. It's funny, I love them. But who makes them? Hormel Foods. Hormel Foods. Hormel Foods, right there. Do any more beef stew. So Hormel Foods, if anybody that works for your company sees this video, I eat Diddy More Beef Stew almost every trip I go on. It'd be kind of cool if you guys sent me a couple cases for free because you get a lot of free advertisement on my channel for this stuff. I love Diddy More Beef Stew. And for the ones of you new to the channel, why Diddy More Beef Stew? Because that was always the first meal growing up that my parents would cook when we went camping on the first night because you got all that prep work ahead of time right getting the camp set up and everything else it was an easy meal to throw together real quick and then the rest of the time for when we were on camping trips they'd make you know full course meals you know good camping foods but we always had diddy more beef stew as our first night out and it stuck with me and i love it i love this stuff i don't eat it at home but i eat it almost every camp trip i go i don't really eat it at home because nobody else in my family Chloe, but Chloe likes it anymore, but nobody else does. As far as my wife and kids, so. Anyway, I'm going to sit here and eat my dinner. I got a beautiful view outside this tent. I'll share that view with y'all. That's what I get to look at when I'm laying in bed. 
I'll probably leave the hot tent door open for quite a few hours just because I know how hot it gets in this little TV tent. So I'll leave that open right before bedtime. Then I'll close it, stock out the stove and go to bed. But I got a beautiful view. Beautiful. I just heard an owl. Owl hunter, we have owls on this island. I just heard one. Anyways, I'm going to eat. Enjoy the view I'm about to give you. And I'll check in with you after dinner time, folks. What's up, everybody? Well, I got dinner all cleaned up. It was, it's about 8.30 at night now, so dinner was almost, what, three hours ago or something like that. So I got dinner done. I cleaned up. I called Mama. It was already dark before I got dinner done, so there was nothing for me to go do. So I called Mama Bear. Then I called Owl Hunter. Sit out with them for a little bit. Checked out some social medias. Created a quick little TikTok and uploaded it. Just been laying here relaxing. I can't even sit up because my back is on fire from that hard row it took for me to get into camp today. And this is the first time I've ever had headwinds that are, was that strong. Where no matter how hard I pedal, there was points of when I was canoeing in here, it would just turn sideways like a kite because I couldn't keep it into the wind and just start going back up river. So it's it took forever. And because of it, my back's on fire, so I, I came and sit up. <laughs> I got to lay down, which is fine because I've nothing else to do tonight, anyways. It's pretty warm in here. It's cold outside. I haven't checked the checked the temp lately to know exactly what the temperature is, but it's definitely cold. As soon as I walk out, I got the whole tent sealed up right now. As soon as I walk outside to go pee or anything, it's, you can see the breath. It's 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 cold. So I'm nice and cozy in here. I'm good for the night. Mama, my mother, she sent me a little message saying, you've got to be freezing. Mama, this hot stove right here, it keeps inside these hot tents, at least the size of the hot tents I have, anywhere from 74 to like 90 degrees, depending on how how hard I got the stove, stove rocking. So Mama, if, when you see this, I, it's not, it might be cold outside, but it's not cold in here. It's it's actually warmer in here than what it is at my house. So, But y'all, I'm going to call the night, go to bed. We'll check back with y'all tomorrow morning for coffee. Everybody sleep good. I'll let you boy. Good morning, everybody. How did everybody sleep last night? I slept pretty good. It got down to 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which I believe is 2 point, or negative 2.223 Fahrenheit, or Celsius, I'm sorry. So 28 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll just say negative 2 Celsius is what it got down to. I stayed warm, stayed comfortable, no problems. I'm ready for this coffee though. So good, so good. All right, so the game plan today is, is uh, I got the stove going enough, good enough to boil that water. I've actually, uh, yeah, to for coffee. I was going to eat oatmeal for breakfast, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm not hungry. I ate, what, two two cans of Diddy more last night, and that's still holding me over. So what I need to do is let the stove burn down, enjoy my coffee, let the stove go out, 
and then I need to break down camp and and then get out of here is what needs to happen so Alright folks, so the only thing left up here at camp was my stove and my gloves because it needs to cool down just a little bit more before I put it in the canoe. canoe is down the bottom of that hill. It's not as steep right here like, it's not as steep it is, as it is right here over there so I was able to get the canoe back in the water without sinking it like I did when I got here. Alright, this spot right here, between this tree and that tree and that tree right in that spot is where we were set up at all you can see is flat ground until somebody was bedding there or whatever but there's no trash no debris beautiful campsite all right um i'm going to get uh in the canoe and then i'll bring you guys back once we're in the canoe pulling off from the island for final thoughts so, talk to you in just a minute. All right, folks, we're back in the boat. Island's right there behind me. Hopefully, the winds help me go upriver as planned. So, it shouldn't be. Uh, a hard row back but if not then it is what it is all right so final thoughts first time camping on this island i had uh, one heck of a time getting here but it was it was awesome i wish i got here sooner so i had more time to explore so i think i wanted to come back here so i can check out the whole island because i ran out of daylight pretty quick yesterday once i got here because of all the fiascos that kept happening but it was an awesome trip. Um, all of our uh, subscribers, thank you very much for becoming subscribers to our channel. Uh, we greatly appreciate that. Our channel uh, members, your uh, names will be below in the description. And yes, I know about the J-Stroke before anybody says anything in my comments. Um, appreciate you all joining me on this adventure. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing on my next adventure. Um, so I guess you're going to have to wait two weeks to find out. My mind ain't quite working right, so I don't know the date offhand, but two weeks from the release of this video will be the next video. It's Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, hope to see you all there. You guys already know how we do it. Holler at your boy. We'll see you on the next one, folks.